everyone, and welcome to another spoiler review of WandaVision here on the Geek Buddies. Yeah. <gasps> hey! <laughs> well, we are back. Episode four uh, dropped yesterday. We are here to talk about, as of this recording, you might be watching it later on in the week, but as of this recording, it dropped yesterday and it absolutely answered so many questions that we might have had. So many people giving positive reviews about this one. We're going to get into all of it, break it all down, look at all the scenes, the Easter eggs, analysis, uh, speculation, all of that here on this show. La uh, second to last warning, spoilers ahead. Second to last warning, spoilers ahead. I am the outlaw, John Roca, joined as always by these one, three wonderful people for these reviews. Uh, Michael? Uh, I am Michael Vogel, <laughs> here with him on the reviews, uh, writer and producer of animated TV shows and content, huge comic book fan, and very, very satisfied Marvel guy right now. There you go, Shannon. Hey, this is Shannon McClung. I'm an animation writer and a television actor where you may have seen me on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Silicon Valley, and Modern Family, which Man. we might be seeing something like that in a couple of weeks. Oh, all right. We'll look for it. That's for sure. Uh, and uh, joining us every week for these reviews, and we're thankful that she's doing so, the great Emma Fife. How are Woo! you, Emma? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, <laughs> this show is great. Yes. Uh, I full on felt like, man, maybe I have a little superhero fatigue uh, towards the end of sort of the film cycle, particularly after Endgame. And I yeah. didn't know where I stood on the Marvel television shows. Right. I was excited about this one and damn, this is a good one to come out the gateway. Uh, <laughs> it just delivers week after week, man. You know what I mean? I just, yeah. whew. I, know I guess too, that I was gonna <clears throat> say that it, it has been really interesting to see the reactions this week versus maybe prior weeks, yeah. wherein it was so much about the mystery, the mystery, the mystery. And this right. week I thought they did a really good job of not totally unpacking the mystery, but unpacking enough that I think maybe some people who were like, I don't know about this might be a little bit on board, more Great. on board now. Great point, Tim, absolutely. And this is your final spoiler review warning. We're gonna get into it now, final spoiler. If you haven't watched it, go watch it, then come back and enjoy us. Or maybe you're a, like Billy Crystal and you, in, when Harry met Sally, you like to read that last page of the novel before you read the whole thing. And you're just gonna watch our review and then watch the episode. Why not? People are weird, sure. they do strange things. <laughs> they create whole towns out of thin air for themselves. Anyway, all right, let's get into the, the overall view. Emma, we just heard for you michael what was your overall view about this episode feeling about this episode well i knew going in i had heard from a few people that this was the one that kind of did open the world up at more kind yeah. of felt more like what we expect from the marvel cinematic universe but i will say even knowing that going in the level of satisfaction that i felt uh and i think they walked a really fine line kind of to your point mm. got a lot of answers got a lot of clarity on what's going on, certainly did not uncover everything. Certainly there's a lot more left to be figured yeah. out, but they did a really nice job. Like, look, I think I think we talked about Lost the past few weeks. Like there's a lot of shows that we know that are built around the mystery box. Mm -hmm. And the mystery box is a dangerous thing. It's a very compelling storytelling device because we love a good mystery. It's the right. thing that makes you come back week to week. It's easy to get fatigued with a mystery box. It's easy to get tired of it. Yeah. It's also, once the mystery is unraveled, once it's revealed, sometimes show becomes boring. Uh, and I think they're doing such a nice job of feeding us the information we need, giving us enough to go on, helping to clarify things, but still having more mystery. Uh, and I think this was just, I obviously, the four of us uh, talked about this last week, mm. other people were getting fatigued, there were other people that were getting confused, I think the four of us were not among them, yeah. but I do think that this is a great way of sort of taking the people that have been along for the ride and taking the people that were unsure and bringing them all together in a place where we are all getting along and we're all very excited. Yeah, Shannon, Mike makes an excellent point here talking about the fact that they were filling in some holes that people might have had about like, oh, I didn't grow up on these sitcoms, I don't feel the connection to it as strongly. Okay. Let's bring you back to the present day. Let's explain to you what's going on. Kind of almost do a pseudo recap of the previous three episodes before we really jump into this thing. What did you feel about this episode? I thought it was dynamite. This is the yep. type of episode that I'm so glad that I took a nap 
around 8 p.m. on Thursday so that when it dropped at midnight, I did not get tired. I was able to go and watch it one more time. Yeah. The great thing about this episode, because I, I've been enjoying the, the classic sitcom interwoven with yeah. the mystery, but the great thing about this episode is we got we got a taste of that MCU that we haven't really had since Endgame. You got this stakes-filled teaser that led right into that awesome Marvel theme and the opening wow. credits. It was like, oh my God, this, yes, the, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is back. And while it did answer a lot of questions, it also posed a few new ones, a lot of the questions that the audience has. Jimmy Woo and Darcy have the same questions. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I do want to say, I mean, I know we'll talk about it further, but yeah. super kudos to them for using Agent Jimmy Woo and Darcy the way that they did because yes. to, to have a bunch of characters in a TV show mm -hmm. asking and doing the same thing that all of us assholes have been doing for the past three weeks yeah. is so brilliant mm -hmm. and so perfect. Uh, and it really is helpful to have them say, Wait, why are they why are they going through these decades of shows? Like what does this mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. And just the way that they sort of just hit every single thing that everyone has been talking about within the world of the show, super brilliant. Yeah. Well, I I, I really enjoyed the episode. I I don't know if I 100% go along with what Michael said about Darcy and Jimmy Woo coming back, but we'll get to that when we get to it and have a conversation about it for sure. But it was great to see Randall Park and uh, Kat Dennings back in the MCU. It's been a while. I mean, Dennings since what? 2013, I think? Mm -hmm. That Thor? Thor 2. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, Thor 2. And, uh, and uh, obviously Randall Park a little bit earlier with Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, and we'll get into all of that. So let's start just with the opening. I'm, I'm going to go to you first on this one. This is what uh, Spider-Man far from home uh, called the blip here yep. uh, the, this is the unblipping yep. uh, people are coming Ooh. back i remember I, I was watching it again, again last, i mean sorry for the first time yesterday and i just my mind was like oh they're doing this and yep. it was like our first re after the ultron situation oh. from last episode it yes. was our first real connection back to the overall mcu we see monica rambeau waking yes. up in a chair who many of us know that chair who've had people or friends of ours or family members in hospitals. We know that chair. You wake up and the person's not there. You're frantically looking around and everyone is blipping back. Emma, what a way to come back and then to find out sadly that Monica's mom had passed from cancer while she was blipped. What an intro before we even get the Marvel logo. What well, did you feel it, about it? It was so insane too, because for us, like the last that we had seen Monica mm -hmm. in this story, she had just been expelled from Westview. Right, right. So it, there was this moment of confusion of like, wait, what's happening? Why is that? Yep. And then I was like, oh no, wait, wait, wait. I know what's happening. This is <laughs> this is people coming back from being snapped out of existence. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and again, it just, it's so interestingly tied back into like where we knew the Marvel Cinematic Universe to be. And it also gave us a little bit of a time frame in terms of like when within the continuity this actual story is taking place. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, I mean, you know, I uh, I was very sad that uh, Monica Rambo's mom had unfortunately uh, passed away because yeah. again, like, because again, like, and I think that they did a good job too of like, depicting her own confusion right. as to what yeah. was happening as she came back. As you would naturally be. I mean, yeah. you'd be running around going, where's my family member? What are you talking about? She's She passed and I wasn't even here for it. I was yeah. blipped away. And, and we do find out later as we go into this thing, where she goes into into uh, into Westview, it is only a few weeks after all of this has yep. happened, which is crazy to think about. Mikey, what do you think about this opening? We hear the Captain Marvel lines. Yep. We hear her call a Lieutenant Trouble. All of that connecting with her. What did you think about this opening? Uh, I loved it. Uh, yeah. Same, exact same as Emma. For a few seconds, I was like, "Is this having to do with what yeah. it's like when you come out of Westview?" Yes. And then, as soon as I as soon as I saw the dust and I mm -hmm. saw people sort of appearing, instantly you know. So first of all. Uh, this is one of the biggest moments in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, if not in comic book movies in our lifetime. The, yeah. the epic scale of the dusting, the blip, uh, the snap, it, it's so huge. And what's really great about this moment is that, uh, you know, we've seen, we saw all the heroes return in Endgame. It was a triumphant moment. We mm. saw uh, yeah, some of the right. band from Peter's school reappear from the blip in uh, um, Far From Home. And right. we got some of the humor. Aunt May showed up in an apartment. Yeah. People didn't know who she was. We, uh, we, we played it for laughs. We've never seen a moment that played this return yes. tragically. Yes. So, yes. And, 
to and showed the confusion and the fear and just and the tragedy because mm-hmm. you know it was really important to Tony and Endgame that you didn't erase anything that happened so that if you had kids those kids didn't disappear like there right. was time but like yeah. we see the opposite side of that and the loss and the things that some people missed out on and so first mm-hmm. of all it was great to sort of touch base on something that we're all familiar with but show it to us in a new way yeah uh, and the other thing that I think is going to be particularly important uh, and I haven't seen a ton of people talking about this online mm. is the fact that this entire show is about loss right and we have one character who is not really letting go yeah uh let's just yeah. let's just say that right uh and now we have this other character who right off the bat deals with a massive piece of loss yeah. also because of what happened with thanos and yeah. you see right away that she tries to move past it. So we have two characters yeah. that are dealing with loss in very, very different ways in this show. Yeah. And I think, as we had said earlier on, Kevin Feige said uh, that there's a reason that Monica Rambeau is being um, introduced in WandaVision, why she's in this. And I think the fact that she's dealing with this loss of her mom, Maria, is very, very important. So yeah. great way yeah. to dive back in and something we're familiar with. Great yeah. way to kind of reintroduce us to Monica Rambeau and great way to like, from a sort of thematic standpoint, hit loss with this other major character right away. Yeah, Shannon, thoughts on this? So Mike, you might've covered everything, but do you have anything to throw in on this? Well, it was interesting because uh, Tayona Paris's acting in this opening is just stellar. Yeah. Mike, Mike and I on Friday, we're actually having a text conversation about a project we're working on. Mm. And I had the episode on in the background in that moment where the doctor has to tell her that, you yeah. know, she died. And you see that reaction that she had of just like that immediate negotiation. No, 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 no. You, you're, you're wrong. You're wrong. And as someone who has gotten that call recently, mm-hmm. I mean, it just it hit me like a ton of bricks to yeah. the point that like I interrupted our text conversation about the product. And be like, man, I'm watching this again. And oh, my God, I just got leveled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just she. Ah, everyone is doing acting wise. Everyone's just doing such a great job. Mm-hmm. And what that moment, what that teaser really captured Yes, we saw it from Far From Home and it was funny. This, mm-hmm. you're capturing the chaos yep. of what this would be like. Because think about how many people are in a hospital at any given time and the uh, possibility that half of them would suddenly right. be dis- be dusted and then right. be brought back. I mean, yeah. awesome. And I think the MCU did a really smart thing here. They gave us enough time. And of course, coronavirus helped. But I think even when it had been released, when it was scheduled to be released, there was enough time between Endgame and now for people to kind of open their minds up to a possible other point of view of the unblipping, right? Where everyone was like excited on your left cap. All this kind of stuff was great to do the fight. But what about people who weren't around for these losses, weren't around to be uh, to be there for their family members? What about these people that moved on and met other people and got married and what like all the yeah. madness of it all? And you're coming back to all of it. You know, people joked, what happened if you if you reappeared back? in midair because you were in a plane when you got blipped all this madness to think about so i love that they uh, approached it from a completely different point of view to show what the stakes might have been here and if we start to see some anti-superhero sentiment anti you understand where it's coming from now ever since these people arrived all this crap has been happening so you know people are going to go that direction i wonder if they explore that as we go into phase four of the mcu a little bit more of a pushback uh to all the superheroes and the supervillains that uh, occur in their worlds now um all right let's move on to the next scene sword is introduced well it's our first official introduction of sword just kind of thrown in there hey this exists now welcome uh uh, we see monica coming back her past doesn't work we see on the screen the blip bring back brings back loved ones and then director tyler hayward comes in uh who is the acting director uh and then we find out of course we find out maria died uh was it two years ago or three years two years two two or three So it's been a while. I don't know why this guy's still the acting director, but it's been a bit. Maybe you give him the official title. But we see that she works at S.W.O.R.D. We see this plaque for Maria Photon Rambo, and she t- he takes her into uh, an office for them to have a discussion about the fact that she has to work on terrestrial stuff. But before we get there, Mike, I go to you first on this one, too. Before we get there, we have these conversations about an astronaut program that's not doing well, about moving away, about missing astronauts, about, uh, you know, this idea of nanotech and AI and robotics. And uh, later we're going to get into radioactive waves. Are we laying this groundwork? Plus, the, the blue and the black and the gray and the, this all feels very fantastic for did you get that vibe as you were watching this? 
hundred percent got that vibe, uh, yeah. for sure. I, I have a, I have a bunch to say about uh, about about <laughs> cosmic radiation in a little bit when we yeah, get we'll there. Get to that, yeah. But uh, but uh, yeah. So a couple things that are really interesting. A uh, couple surprises. I think that at least I had assumptions, and we I think we had discussed a little bit that coming out of the post credit sequence in Far From Home, that Sword was a new thing. That Nick right. Fury was sort of right. building Sword out in the absence of Shield, and this was his next big project. Um, but little bit of course correction here based on what we now know. Uh, Maria Photon Rambeau, Photon of course, as Johnny has said several times in the past few weeks, is what Monica Rambeau's superhero name is in the comics. So one of them, for if sure, she, yeah. One of them. Yeah. And if she does, she does go down that road, we now know that that was her mom's call sign. Right. Um, but that Maria Rambeau was one of sort of the founders of S.W.O.R.D. That just the same way that Peggy uh, and Howard Stark kind of took what happened out of Captain America and founded S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Uh, Maria Rambeau took what happened out of her experiences in Captain Marvel and extraterrestrial life and went down this road of founding S.W.O.R.D. So S.W.O.R.D. has been around for a while. Yeah. We just didn't know about it, uh, which I thought was interesting. Very similar uh, in Captain America Winter Soldier. You walk into S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, you see the giant S.H.I.E.L.D. logo. You walk into S.W.O.R.D., you see right. the giant S.W.O.R.D. logo. Let's talk about Tyler Hayward. He might as well have a neon sign above his head that says, I'm going to be a bad guy just <laughs> blinking just <laughs> blinking over and over I mean, anytime some you know yeah. non-threatening white man steps <laughs> into the role that was previously held by a badass woman of color and they're just the acting director yeah. like well, you know and also and also subtextually it's, it's really it's really clear in their conversations that monica would have been the next in line for this job yes, had she, she not blip. Right. so it's like hey kind of white straight guy who seems vaguely yeah. menacing who doesn't really deserve this job and is kind of a douche but like right. pretending to be nice it's yeah. like you're a bad guy i've seen a lot of people saying maybe he's really working for aim if they bring yeah. aim back into this like definitely he's he's got bad guy vibes like like rolling off of him like it's cosmic radiation he was kind of interesting too because in his initial sort of interactions with Monica, you were like, okay, maybe he's all right. But then yeah. the more we saw him in the episode, like especially once we got to the point that we were at the encampment outside of Westview where they're like monitoring what's going on. Mm -hmm. You see him really being a jerk to people, to Darcy specifically, and I did not yeah. like yeah. that. <laughs> did not like that. Another, I think I think of all the conversations they were having about the nanotech versus yeah. like, we're, we're grounded, we're not doing this, we don't have enough astronauts because of the blip. Uh, my favorite little bit of dialogue was when he said, hey, space is now full of unexpected threats, because right. based on what's happened recently. Yeah. And Monica's response is, always was full of threats, and allies. and allies. And of course, this yeah. is a reference yes. to the fact that when she was when she was a little girl, not only does she know that her mom's best friend, Carol Danvers, is flying around in space doing God knows what, but yeah. she also knows that the scrolls are cool. Like exactly. she was hanging yes. out with scrolls when she was a little kid. So yeah. this is a girl who has grown up knowing about extraterrestrial life. Mm -hmm. Her mom founded Sword. She's clearly been an astronaut. She's adventurous. She has yeah. a very open view of space. She has a very open view of these things. And I think that even if this idea of the way that she perceives extraterrestrial life doesn't necessarily come into play with how she's dealing with what's going on in WandaVision. Mm -hmm. I think it's laying a lot of groundwork, groundwork for who she's going to be and how we're going to see her in Captain Marvel 2 and beyond. So I thought yeah. that was really interesting. Yeah, and if I, if I could yeah, jump in please, real yeah. quick, like now, yeah. th and this is nowhere near confirmed, there is a slight connection yeah. between Tyler oh. Hayward and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's more than slight, but yes, go ahead. It's... Yeah. it's <laughs> I mean, if if it weren't for last episode with the the Hydra soap that was a connection to Agents of Shield, yeah, normally yeah. I'd be like, nah. I mean, that's just, it's a coincidence. But there was a character named Brian Hayward yep. from Agents of Shield season one that was uh, part of Hydra. That he was part of uh, the Centipede program, which is they're trying to make their own version of Super Soldiers. Yeah. And now they don't mention him having a brother. They do mention him having a sister. Yeah. Um, but the fact that it is spelled the same, and they're both tall, square jawed looking military dudes like eh, that's <laughs> that's very convenient if it's not if it's not if it's not uh deliberate yeah absolutely yeah. yeah absolutely we'll see and so she gets told that she's got to work on this fbi case she's not happy about it. she doesn't want to do it so hayward says well you can just sit back and uh, you know go back and keep recovering because apparently she's the first one to come back who's been unblipped who worked at sword first one to come back she comes back three weeks after finding out that her mom is gone yep. she takes it and the and she finds out that these protocols were implemented by her mom so it's her own mom who has passed away that is grounding her and making her work on these uh, cases that are on earth only not out in space terrestrial missions 
only. So uh, we move. Any final things? Or we move on to Westview. Any final uh, things here? Just, just the point that like they they do make such a point that it's been three weeks. She's the first yeah. one back, and that she's like, "Hey, I'm okay." That again, we're really setting her up as dealing with loss, not necessarily in the better way, but yeah, in yeah. a completely opposite way that Wanda is. Yeah, and, and also and, just yep. setting up the immediateness of it. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean of, of that. Like it has been such a short time period, and right. you know, with Wanda, the loss that she suffered actually happened. A while ago, yeah, a while ago, ago yeah. right? Yeah. Well, so, well, yeah, so, well not to her, but her. not to her, but not to her. Right, right, yeah, right, exactly. Right, right. To her, I mean, like vision, vision at this point died roughly like five years and three weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. Right, but right. to her, her timeline, and it's very similar to Monica. I mean, again, yeah. they're they're, they're yeah. buildings. Like Monica says at the beginning, like she's like, I I was in, I was asleep. Mom had come out of surgery. I was asleep. Yep. Maybe I was out for a few seconds, yep. but where is she? So she's having this yep. experience of this thing that happened a long time ago. I'm dealing with it now right. in the right. same way that Wanda, you know, we know that this is now three weeks later than Endgame. So like, look, three weeks ago, she was like at a lakeside uh, talking about how uh, Black Widow and Vision were gone with Hawkeye. Mm. Right. And then for those three weeks, she's been dealing with this Vision just died and made her way to Westview. Yeah. yeah, and I think this is important because as we find out later, and we'll speculate later, we do know Monica Rambo's history by now. If you don't, she was one of the Captain Marvel's course, Photon, Spectrum, number of names she had in the comics. So she has her own abilities, her own abilities to do what she's doing and maybe withstand one. And this may be the battle they're setting up. And this is, as you were talking about it, Mike, it occurred to me, this battle between both of them and how they're handling their grief one hopefully will navigate the other through it, but it seems like they're setting up these two women to be the ma the battle near the end of the season with her embracing her powers and Wanda. Because Wanda, well, later on, what Wanda does to her, I think I'd want a little a little payback, a little revenge on that one. So we shall see uh, later on if that does happen as the uh, show goes along. Uh, all right, let's move on to Westview here. She drives up, Monica drives up and uh, sees uh, Jimmy Woo back here working for the FBI. We got two kind of uh, nefarious looking <laughs> sheriffs uh, sitting on the edge or standing on the edge uh, by their trunk there of their uh, a police car we see a sign that says welcome to westview uh home is where you make it uh and uh they have this conversation and of course jimmy woo introduced they're doing the car trick which is nice <laughs> ant-man and the wasp reference you know jimmy got it he, he got it. his trick he did it. <laughs> so clearly he didn't get blipped because he's had five years to work on that trick for sure yes. uh and uh he is there talking about a missing person in the witness protection program the sheriff we find out is from the town of Eastview, uh, and so uh, clearly she has removed the existence of Westview right from people's minds. Is that mm -hmm. what we're supposed to get from that moment here, Emma? I mean, did, is she re does she remove it? I think that yeah, because I mean that, and that's certainly in line with our sort of understanding of oh. how Monica was interacting with being inside the world of Westview, wherein yeah. like. She didn't remember who she was. Right. Good point. She yes. didn't really know. She, I mean, she straight up said, like, I don't know why I'm here. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, yeah. Right, right, right. So it does seem very plausible to me that like Westview is a real town, but mm -hmm. because of Wanda's magic, in order to completely protect herself and to keep right. her world intact, well, like she has prevented people from being able to remember it. Well, it begs the question then, Mike, why can Monica and Jimmy Woo see it? Monica can see because Monica probably has latent powers, but why can Jimmy Woo see well, it? So what I is don't that? know. I don't know that Monica has latent powers. Like you're okay. taking the idea, you're taking the idea that Monica from the comic book is, is is photon but she may by the end of this experience have some level of powers but i don't think that she's got some secret superpowers that we're going to find out later on oh maybe, I do. maybe she does i absolutely do but we'll yes, see we'll see but i don't think it's a latent powers thing i mean they kind of address this first of all westview is absolutely a real town yes, we are yes. staring at it like yeah. it is there yeah. uh the fun of this whole moment is that these two cops who now say they're from eastview which is not a place i don't <laughs> think <laughs> yeah. uh like, like you're seeing that they are standing right next to the sign yeah. and and they they are insistent that it doesn't exist. We can see the town behind them. It is clearly there. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Wu says about, it's, it's just under 4,000 people, uh, mm -hmm. which starts to be really horrifying when you kind of think about what Wanda's actually doing. Yes. Um, and I think like what they do a great job of in this episode is that Monica and Jimmy, I love when 
shows and movies are smart enough to do this. Because the instant question when you're like, nobody remembers Westview is like, well, our two main characters are clearly no. And mm-hmm. they just get in front of it. They're like, well, how do we remember it? Right. Uh, right. And, I th- and I think like they, they br- Monica comes up with a very plausible explanation, which is only people who have any kind of connection, connection. to Westview or the people there don't remember uh. it. Outside of that, outside of that, it's fine. And what we're really seeing mm-hmm. here, okay. um, this is how Wanda's powers work mm. in the comics. Okay. This is a yeah. reshaping of reality, right. uh, reshaping of people's understanding of what exists, understanding mm-hmm. what's there. Like having two cops standing in front of a sign being like, there's no Westview. What are you talking about? Like right. this is full on House of M level Wanda Maximoff stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I'm listening to it on the headphones this morning. One of the cops before Monica walks up goes, oh boy, here we go. So it's just this, so there's this idea of like even the sheriffs, the police that don't believe at these, you know, outside outsiders coming in and telling them what's going on. Shannon, we have Monica go, you know, have this back and forth with uh, Jimmy Woo there about what's going on there. Uh, pulls out this helicopter drone that has the Captain Marvel colors, sets it all up. By the way, I want a sword jacket. I'm going to tell you right now, I want a sword jacket. <laughs> Damn good in that jacket. I like that jacket. But sets out the drone, and uh, Jimmy Woo talks about how he had Elliot Ness posters. Uh, nobody's ever made Elliot Ness posters, unless he's talking about the Untouchables. Then maybe he had those posters growing up as a kid, but nobody makes Elliot Ness posters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was a nice little, you know, entry into his point of view and how he feels kind of apart from everything. And later he makes a little comment about the FBI that I think shows you that Jimmy Woo is pretty much an individual, a lone wolf here trying to figure out where he belongs as he pursues these things. So I like that. But yeah, the drone is in there. The drone has 57 on it. We've seen 57 on a number of things now. Uh, so that leads to something I imagine down the road. But anyway, she gets the drone going, sends it through the energy field. And it disappears. Uh, and then Monica walks up, put her hand, puts her hand in first initially, almost like uh, James Earl Jones in Field of Dreams, except she doesn't giggle. She like takes it and then boom is immediately sucked in. How did you feel about this entire sequence of the scene? Oh, it was fantastic. And also, Jimmy said beforehand when Monica, Monica asked him, like, how come you haven't gone in? And he's like, because mm. it doesn't want me to. Can't you feel that? And clearly, yeah. Monica is the one who's the who has gotten the closest thus far. And she touches it. She touches it again. And she gets sucked in. Yeah. So one, you know, knowing that that drone is what is the helicopter that uh, Wanda is going to find in their front yard. Right. To me, it was just kind of like, gosh, like re- really subverting expectations. Because, you know, I know we were definitely theorizing after episodes one and two, like, oh, this must have been a helicopter crash. Somebody mm-hmm. trying to get in. It's like, nope, she, it literally just changed. <laughs> It, yeah. it, the the production design, as he says yeah. later in the episode, like mm-hmm. that kind that kind of drone, that's not going to make sense in a 1950s 1960s world. So it manipulates it to ch- to what would make sense. And yeah. this is not the first time that we'll see that in this episode. Absolutely, uh, yeah, Mike. We see the pixels, the TV pixels, where yeah. you put your hand in. That is very fascinating as well. Yeah, what were your thoughts on this? Also, I don't I don't know. This is one of those I'm gonna say something that is definitely me getting into. Am I just seeing things to see things at this point? I don't oh. fucking know. But I do think it's interesting that the drone is clearly Captain Marvel colors, which yes. could right. make sense. Maria, it's Maria's bestie. She created sword. Sword drones are Captain yeah. Marvel colors. Like it's that makes sense to me. Yeah. But then as we pointed out, or as one of you guys pointed out, when when it goes through, not only does it turn into a toy helicopter, but it's red and yellow, which yeah. is kind of like everyone was like, oh, it's like Iron Man Iron colors. Man. And then the tether that our beekeeper gets uh, separated from later on, which turns into a jump rope, uh, is is red, white, and blue. Captain which America. I was like, well, that's kind of Captain oh. America colors. And I'm like, and, and I'm like, I'm like, am that's I great. just, am I just seeing things no. to no, see that's things good. now? No, or that's good. Yeah, you, you are good. You are good. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Emma. There's one thing here with this. E- there's a possible Easter egg here. Uh, the town is situated in New Jersey. Uh, one of the other upcoming Marvel Disney Plus TV series are going to be set in New Jersey. That's Ms. Marvel. Kamala Khan considers herself New Jersey's protector. She's another Captain Marvel involved yep. in this. So, so this is fascinating how they're just kind of laying a little bit of groundwork of what this uh, decision that Wanda makes is going to have ramifications all over the place. Dropping that pedal oh, in the water. Yeah, seeing the ripples. absolutely. Yeah, yep. So we shall see. What was your uh, thought? Oh, no, you yeah. Should... What's, your, what's is he having a conniption? What's going on? <laughs> well, he, he is no, wondering just... if Kamala Khan lives in Westview. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I, I don't. Oh my god! I don't think. No, no, no. 
I don't think that Kamala Khan lives in Westview, <laughs> but I do think that there's been a lot of questions. Uh, in the comic books, Kamala Khan is an inhuman. That's where her yes. powers come from. Yes. She's right. not a mutant. And in the current world that we have in the MCU, we have neither inhumans nor mutants. True. So True. we know Miss Marvel is coming, but I wasn't sure where her powers come from. But since we have all of this cosmic radiation all over Jersey and all this crazy reality warping yep. stuff yep. is happening, this yep. may be, to Johnny's point, this might be where both Monica Rambeau and Kamala yep. Khan end up getting some level of power. So yeah, definitely, like, just put a little pin in that and, like, yep. we'll see where that goes. But that interesting, interesting idea. Also, I just, wanna, I just yeah, wanted to say, too, about, yeah. like, the framing of the way they're doing this TV show and how much more interesting the bit with the drone was here because of the way that we had been introduced to it. Like, imagine if this was the first episode. Right. And they, like, it started off with, oh, we're camped out outside of this wacky town right. situation right. that Wanda's created. It, now we're going to go in. It's so much more interesting that they it, did it the other way. Agreed. A thousand percent agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, like, to, to, to everybody, uh, like, just going to agree with this because it's a great point. Yeah. But, like, uh, had they done it, I thought about this too. Yeah. Had they done it the other way and you got it kicked off with this blip moment of mm -hmm. her coming back and that's how we met her and whatever, yeah. it would have been, it would have gotten the people that have been very confused the past few weeks probably sure. in it faster. Yeah, but yeah. it just would have been such a normal way of like yes. a story happening. Yeah. It would have been boring. And, yeah. and doing it in the way that they've done it, even if it maybe to a few people, the, the sitcom stuff wore a little thin. To, to throw you into the deep end and have you so confused and then go back and track it the way that this episode does is just, to me, way more satisfying storytelling. It, yeah, I agree. much more satisfying. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, I, this is going to be a very weird analysis for a second, but like there's this anime series called Yuri on Ice, which is about figure skating, oh, okay. but you find out about three quarters of the way through the series that like Yuri, your sort of main character is actually an unreliable narrator. And there were events that had happened in the past that he had no recollection of because he got really, really drunk yeah. at a party. So like it, but again, it's that whole idea of the unreliable narrator, but just taken in such an interesting direction with right. seeing Wanda's world through Wanda's eyes and then seeing it from the outside. Yeah, good point. Uh, all right, let's move on to our next uh, scene here. Uh, this is the reintroduction of Darcy back in yes. the which we find out later she had actually been in since the first episode. But uh, she is reintroduced to us here. Uh, this is 24 hours later after Monica has been sucked in uh, to uh, Westview. She's in the uh, truck with uh, three or four other people asking them what their jobs are. You find out one works in artificial intelligence, a chemical engineer astrophysicist nuclear biology that uh and that she says whatever uh, it lets her know that whatever uh threat that sword is dealing with hill they have no idea what it is we see that when they get the to the pla place they're going we see the 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 graphic there sword response base outside westview new jersey we find out darcy is a doctor now thanks to uh a military man who will uh who I, mistakenly calls her the, yeah, i would ahead, like go. to point out how genius that moment was because yeah. <laughs> that shit happens to women all the time all the fucking time oh Fair miss enough. this miss that no matter what and her correcting him on doctor oh i felt that i yep, felt yep. that i respect that i respect and clearly she didn't gonna get unblipped right because she's been doing for five yep. years and got her doctor, uh, got her doctorate because she was not a doctor at last time we saw her yeah. uh, in Thor. Uh, she, uh, you know, she uses her equipment uh, to find out that there's a colossal amount of CMBR here, cosmic microwave background radiation, longer wave wavelengths are happening over the noise. And then she asks for a TV as quickly as possible, one that isn't flat. Emma, what an introduction, reintroduction of of uh, Darcy here. What was your feel? I knew you were feeling her. I just. I, I as soon as I was watching that scene, I was like, Emma's gonna have so much. I to say love about Darcy. <laughs> I I like cried when she came back. Oh, I wow. just, I was not expecting to get so emotional, but <laughs> it's just I I love a really well done, like not super character in a superhero story. Uh and and here we see Darcy getting to like be utilized the way that like mm. I just I always wanted her to be because she is just like her superpower is she's just like a really smart girl yeah, yeah and yeah. nobody takes her seriously because like she is a woman and that just happens all the time and nobody wants to listen to her but to see her in a position where suddenly people are being forced to listen to her because yeah. she is the only one who has 
any sort of inkling as to what's going on. And she's the one who first starts to like tap into the mystery yeah. of what's going on here. She gets the, the sitcom feed up on her not flat TV. Yeah. It was awesome. And yeah. I, God damn it. Somebody get her a fucking cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. all of them ignoring her every time she yeah. asked for a coffee. I, it was, I was just like, <laughs> Oh my God, I, I know this life. <laughs> Shannon, what did you think about her coming back here, uh, injecting some, you know, funny, sarcastic, uh, uh, unique Darcy uh, atmosphere into the show? Yeah, she definitely, you know, I'm not a huge Kat Dennings fan myself. Mm -hmm. I Two Broke Girls is one of the things that when I see it on television, it, it's literally needles in my brain. <laughs> um, but, but I will say I do like her. I, I did like her in Thor and Thor 2, and I like her as this, and I like that she you do have it's it's filling this void like we don't have this character and i do think that she and randall park play off each other very very well great yeah. chemistry yeah, great chemistry is, with randall uh, park exactly absolutely emma and michael this is what marvel does right bring you a serious yep. situation and you got to bring some characters in who make a little bit of a lighter approach to it but still don't lose the stakes and i think yeah. they you certainly you see their chemistry uh eventually here when we get to it from the beginning yeah. certainly her coming well, in commanding her space so powerfully and there is the parallel too with him and nobody listening to him because yeah, he's true. the one that's exactly. like hey we don't I, know I, I think that there's a way that we can maybe get in there subterraneanly and everyone's right. like yeah. no how could you possibly know Asian man? Yeah, like, right. you know, it just, I, there's it definitely really a lot. Yeah. For me. The minorities, yeah. the minorities are sticking together here. Yeah. And I do think <laughs> that, you know, there had been a lot of conjecture again, early on the same way that we kind of thought that this was where sword was being created and whatever else yeah, yeah. sword's been around for a while. There's a lot of like, Oh, well, Darcy and Wu are going to be sword agents now. Mm -hmm. um, well, they're clearly not. I mean, no. she's brought in as an expert. He's an FBI agent, but I right. do think that as we proceed into phase four, I think we're going to see a lot more of these two. And I think they're very quickly by the end of this adventure, since they're the only two that seem to have any fucking clue what's going on, <laughs> yes. going yeah. to be pretty high up in the sword hierarchy when all is said and done here. Yeah, it seems they're going to have their own space inside this base for sure to do yeah. what they need to do. And we see later when Jimmy is putting up the board that montage of them. Doing, that's all trying to create a little bit of space because they're the ones who kind of understand to a degree what might be happening here. Also, a part of this scene, we talk about the cosmic right, microwave background radiation. Michael, you said you had stuff to say on this. Uh, they do have the quote here. It's a relic radiation dating back to the Big Bang. Uh, it's not really laid out how this cosmic radiation, but I mean, you hear cosmic radiation, you hear cosmic rays in your mind, you think Fantastic Four again, and of course you go back to what Hayward said about the problems with the astronaut program. This seems to be yet another indication that this is a way they're going to figure this out and have the Fantastic Four introduced. What do you say? I think that's absolutely true. And I also I also think there's a really interesting connection towards why we have this whole TV thing going on in WandaVision as well. Mm. So I did a little bit of like research on a cosmic radiation. <laughs> and uh, put the glasses on. <laughs> what I so so yeah, so as you said, uh, cosmic microwave background radiation, it's actually a real thing. It's not like made up pseudoscience. Right. Uh, it actually was discovered in the 1960s. It actually is residual uh, heat of creation, the afterglow of the Big Bang. Right. So in the world of Marvel Cinematic Universe, in addition to the Fantastic Four references, since they got their powers through cosmic radiation, and of course their, their big bad Galactus loves to devour the power cosmic. So right. the word cosmic is really important, but also we know what else was created in the Big Bang. Earth. The Infinity Stones. Oh, that too. Yeah. The Infinity Stones came out of the Big Bang. So the Mind yeah. Stone itself came from the Big Bang, the same as this cosmic microwave background radiation. So yeah. not only are we sort of hinting at where we might go with the Fantastic Four, we are also tying, like when, when Darcy says there's massive cosmic uh, microwave backgrounds uh, radiation coming from the, uh, the city from Westview, yeah. it makes sense because that's what the Mind Stone would be giving off. Mm. And when she says there's longer wavelengths on top of this, somebody get me an old TV, that's not just Marvel doing some stupid silly jump. What I found out when I looked into it is uh, an old TV before we went all digital, as anybody who knows, that's how TVs worked. You had a giant tower mm -hmm. and very long radio waves came out. And depending on the wavelength, it was a different channel. So when you flipped your channel, you got a different wavelength that had I Love Lucy, a different wavelength that had this, a different wavelength that had this. But channel three on old TVs was always staticky. Yeah. And that was uh, microwaves and human radio waves. But do you know what 1% of that static is if you got rid of all the rest of it? 
What? It is cosmic microwave background radiation. Oh! We, we <laughs> actually, in old school TVs, be, yeah. you are getting cosmic microwave background radiation. So hey, when Darcy yeah. says in the episode, when she's like, there's a massive amount of CB CMBRs coming off of this, and then yeah. instantly goes, there's longer wavelengths, get me an old TV. Yeah. That actually tracks perfectly Ooh. well scientifically. Okay. Um, this concludes the science lesson of today's <laughs> episode of WandaVision. But I was pretty impressed with that. I was like, this is really, really, this all tracks yeah. and kind of gives you a hint as yeah. to why Wanda's powers would manifest in this way. Yeah, and we should take a, we should take a moment to give credit to the writers of the episode, Jock uh, Schaefer, Bobak Esfarjani, and Megan McDonald oh, for putting this together because that's a great point, Mike, and uh, of course director Max Chapman on this as well. But yeah, but great point to bring up. Certainly a deep dive here on the CNBR, what it might lead to, and how we've had it in our lives uh, for without knowing about it for sure. Uh, all right, let's move on to our next uh, scene. It's Agent Franklin now going into the town with the acting director there. Director Hayward and Jimmy have that conversation. This is where, Emma, you're referencing a little bit of that Hayward assholishness comes out here. Uh, so we get this subterraneous effect. We get this guy, once again, uh, he's in a hazmat, hazmat suit. suit. We find later that when he goes through that force field, or energy field rather, he becomes a beekeeper. And as Michael said, that the strap connecting them essentially becomes a pseudo piece of a jump rope, a red, white, and blue mm -hmm. jump rope when they yank it back out, maybe referencing Captain America. Great point, Mike. But we also hear Agent Franklin. Franklin Richards, Fantastic Four. There's just so much being laid here in my mind as we're watching this. But we also get a really interesting point what, with this exchange with Jimmy Woo where someone says, where someone says, I think it's Hayward says, doesn't the FBI miss you? And he's like, no, sir, it's not softball season. So it makes, yeah. it, seem, it, makes it seem like Jimmy himself Self is not only out uh, an outsider here, he's also an outsider at the FBI, you know? So this idea yeah. of two outsiders like Darcy and Jimmy and their separate worlds coming together to try to get you figure out what's going on here, I think is absolutely fascinating. And it was a nice little color to see on Randall Park because that character, Jimmy Woo, has been around in Marvel Comics since 1956, I think. So he really takes the Marvel Dang. Universe. Yes. It's been around Jimmy Woo a while. So pretty interesting to when you explore his character to see how they might use this in a more powerful way, in a more prominent way as we go into phase four. Um, anyway, sorry, what do you think about this, uh, Mikey? What do you think about this whole situation here and how, how we were getting a little more of Hayward being a jerk off and then getting a little more of Jimmy Woo having a little more uh, uh, trying to put a little more understanding of what's happening here. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think you covered all of it. I think that's. Okay. I think we're, we're we're seeing how Hayward is at at worst probably a bad guy, mm -hmm. and at best just a shitty director. Uh, and yeah. and we're also seeing the shades of like a, Jimmy Woo is right. Like this is a dumb mm -hmm. plan. And to your point, you know, lots of when we all saw that beekeeper in episode two, everybody flipped out. What yeah. is it, bees? Is it Mephisto? It's the devil. It's yeah. aim. It's this <laughs> and the most simple explanation was right it's a hazmat suit it's a sword agent he changed it was it's very clear that when you enter wanda's field of power mm -hmm. uh your reality warps yeah and as yeah. i said this is we are it, it's it's all it's always great because you know what they've done with wanda throughout the mcu in this first uh decade uh where they kind of took her powers and kind of brought them into this is how we're going to ground them somewhat to be within this universe and now they are fully unleashed and it is everything any scarlet witch fan would want to see yeah and not only does the reality warp it is permanently changed when yeah. they get that cable back it is still the jump rope when monica gets right. blasted back out she's still in the 70s wardrobe yeah great point great point man uh yeah, yeah. so we, we see all of that uh, what's your thoughts on this uh uh emma as we see uh, even they come up with this idea we see uh, of trying to connect with uh wanda you know uh, emma says yes. what, when she, oh, sorry, Darcy says, when she washes dishes once an episode, ugh. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Which the is commentary great. was great. Yeah, it's so perfect. And this is, there's a, like, a little bit of a break that they can get through and maybe yeah. send a message. So they set this all up outside and tried to contact with her. Of course, references episode two, that mm -hmm. moment with Jimmy Woo trying to get through the radio yep. to contact her as they're playing Help Me Rhonda or Help Me Wanda. Uh, what was your th thoughts about this science, that when they're trying to science the shit out of this moment? Well, I mean, you know, they do see a moment where I like that they made it a little unclear 
yeah. from the perspective of Darcy and Jimmy Wu as to whether or not they had connected with her. Because, you know, Dar they basically, they see the radio on the table at the sort of like, yeah. you know, for the children <laughs> charity <laughs> meeting. Um, right. and even though there's no children anywhere. Right. Anywhere, town, anywhere. Yes, yeah. child, anywhere. Except yeah. until the babies were born. Now there's children, but still. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but, but that they do see that moment where like they zero in on Wanda's face and the fact that she's right. kind of like dropping the sitcom acting and there is this moment of recognition and they're like, yeah, that's it. And then the moment's over and they're like, ah, experiment right. failed. Yeah. So, uh, and, Sh and Shannon, a little bit earlier, we get them crowding around this TV, uh, looking at these previous episodes, and we hear from Darcy that there were more episodes than the episodes we have been able to see. There have been more episodes of this WandaVision story, and Darcy says for the first time, "Hey, I know everyone was blipped back, but this guy's dead, right? Vision is dead." Yeah. So what is it right on the table? right there and uh, jimmy says wait a minute do you think the universe created a sitcom starring two avengers essentially speaking the meta moment out for those of us who've been watching this thing so uh you're a sitcom actor there uh, uh shannon mcclung you're watching this situation watching this back and forth you see darcy go oh at the end of the sitcom moment when they're when they're kissing uh what was your feeling here looking at this well, it was awesome that we find out that, yes, there are other episodes, because she talks about yeah. Wanda washes dishes in, in, in every episode. Ugh. So the yeah. fact that other stuff is is being put out there, we're only catching a glimpse of, of you know, each decade. And they're talking about, like, why are the decades switching? And, yeah. like, that, that's a question that we have, and it's a question that they have as well. Um, something that I thought was great was also when she, uh, you get that moment with Dottie with the glass breaking and how it immediately skips over. And yeah. like, someone is censoring the broadcast. The broadcast. Now. Yeah. Do we think yeah. that's Wanda? Do we think that's somebody else? Right. We don't know right now. And you yeah. find out that all yeah. these characters in this show that they have real world identities. Yes. And they start to throw up, you know, their their actual, yep. you know, their driver's yeah. licenses. Yep. The people that we don't see, we don't see a photo for Dottie whatsoever. Not yet. We yeah. don't see an ID for Agnes. Like they don't right. talk about Agnes at all, but they do have stills of the show yeah. all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Dottie the is the one who's missing. I yeah. loved too was again, they basically, they're like compiling things on this whiteboard. And yes. I, I loved the little detail on the whiteboard and the dry erase of like, why the hexagons? Yeah. <laughs> Which is what well, we're asking, right? We're doing yeah. the same thing. And you see and the is, word scrolls though on the board yep, as well. Yep. I mean, Mikey, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean, I was just gonna say, this is what I was saying about the way that they used both Darcy and Jimmy Woo in this episode, which is we see them throughout this doing what we have been doing yes. for the past three weeks so yeah, yeah. oh what's up with hexagons are these people really here are they scrolls are they right. this like they are doing exactly what we the why is the universe creating a sitcom with the avengers in it isn't vision dead how is he alive what yeah. is going on so we get to watch them and it really does i think uh it's fun to watch mm -hmm. but i think it also gives an unsure audience a little bit of comfort because yep. you know that your marvel hasn't gone off the rails right marvel yeah. hasn't gone eh hey, fuck it it's crazy we're just gonna do what we want to do uh that's that's dc job so what marvel oh, does don't do is, that uh, don't do that just kidding <laughs> um but no but like it it, it it in a very subtle way it's a nod to the audience that says hey we're calling this out because there yes. actually is a reason for all yeah. of this and yeah. it actually really does make sense yeah. um yeah i do like it's, it's interesting that they have you have agnes's picture up there uh but no name it's interesting that Dottie is we nowhere see to Dottie be seen. At all. And what I find really interesting about what you were talking about, uh, Emma, when they try and do the radio uh, and it just sort of cuts out. Like, we know that it came through because we saw yes. it happen in real time. Yes. But there, it, it just it just cuts. And yes. Darcy says, someone is editing, someone is censoring, censoring. the broadcast. Yeah. And what, I, what I've been wondering, and I watched it a few times now, clearly this is Wanda's doing. Clearly Wanda has done this to Westview. Is Wanda editing? Is That's Wanda what we don't censoring know. this? I, I or is there it. someone else censoring it? Right. Like, <laughs> is somebody like it's like that's what I'm I'm really curious about. And I think that's another sort of unanswered yeah. question. Yeah. Okay, because I, I think that it it does kind of lend then to the bigger conversation that I definitely want to have about this episode, okay. which is this idea of like what exactly is going on with Wanda. Because from my perspective, I did not see this story as like a woman goes crazy and can't handle her emotion story at all. Um, I saw some people that were mad that were like, I yeah. wish this isn't the direction they were going with this. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what direction is that? And they're like, oh, that, you know, 
women can't handle their emotions and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't see the story that way at all. Yeah, I see yeah. this as a story. And, and you know, people feeling that way is completely valid if that's right. how they feel. But to me, this is a story about trauma. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a really, like, profound look at how we deal with trauma and loss, but yeah. framed through a person who literally has the ability to create the fantasy world in yeah. which she wishes to withdraw. Yeah. So I look at even just like our own personal collective trauma that we've all been dealing with for almost a year now of yeah. like having to stay in our homes because of a pandemic and not having any of the normal social interactions that we normally get, yeah. not being able to either grieve the losses that we come up against or celebrate the successes that we find. Right. Um, and, you know, for me, I look at kind of the beginning of when everything was sort of breaking down and how I was having a hard time, like, kind of, uh, like, we all wanted to withdraw, I think, in yeah. some way from the reality of what was happening in our world. And so I think, you know, for me, it was, I was playing a lot of video games because that was the only thing that would keep my attention. But I think about, like, if if you are somebody who is as tremendously powerful as Wanda, like, yeah. she's literally able to create this world in which she wants to live also emma if you're if you're a person not a regardless of gender yeah. if you're a person who has endured the trauma of the loss of parents yeah. loss of the twin brother and then loss of the love of your life right like in succession uh in such a short amount and of time somebody who's extremely powerful yes, yet yes. has been powerless to stop this this is her attempting to take control of her own uh, narrative yeah so I'm gonna say something. I, I disagree with you slightly, I, okay. but I but here's why, and I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna frame this carefully because I do agree that a story that says women can't control their emotions is horrible. But it's yeah. not saying that. I don't but, know, but I don't yeah. think it's saying that though. Yeah. Wanda Maximoff in comics is a character. Yeah. Who cannot always control her emotions and her sure. power runs rampant. 100%. So this is a character that does this. Also, yes, I yes, this is her dealing with trauma. Yes, is this? It's not necessarily a good way to do it. She is literally controlling four, oh, no. almost four thousand people. Yeah. I'm not saying it's but, a good but, way to do but it. But I do think. But I do think to your point though. I think that this is another important reason why what they're doing with Monica Rambeau is so yes. essential yeah. to this story. Because this if without a Monica Rambeau. If Wanda does indeed become the villain of this piece, right. if Wanda does let her emotions run away from her and her power runs rampant, and this is what leads us into more movies, yeah. without a Monica Rambeau, which is another female character that is showing the other way to deal with loss, right. it would be very much a, this is what women do. Yeah. Having these two women uh, both dealing with the same thing allows you to say, okay, Wanda is the villain here, and sure. the way she's handling this is bad, but we're not saying this is all women yeah. because this is what our hero of the piece, Monica, is doing. So I think that's an interesting balance. So and don't get it, me it, wrong, because I, I do think that there is still a very strong possibility that we are going down the route of like, this is how Wanda becomes the villain. But again, I'm not seeing it as crazy woman can't handle right. her emotions. I'm seeing it as incredibly powerful woman is the architect of her own destruction. Yeah. I actually had a friend. Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, just saying, which happens when you're yeah. dealing with trauma, you know? Yeah. And, and you, you, I have it, I'm sure all of us have had a certain <laughs> section of it. And Shannon, of course, yours is more immediate brother. But like, it's, you kind of create a little bit of a, your own reality to existence so that you can process it and function your way in life and then eventually come out of it. And who judges another person's trauma? I don't see this as a woman I'm losing. I, I really don't see the gender here, but I get why people yeah. do. I don't yeah, to totally. It. But I, in I, my I, mind, I'm seeing yeah. a character who I really love and respect and admire. Yeah. And Elizabeth Olsen, who's an incredible actress, so played good. this play this situation out and certainly her reaction which we see later when she sees vision in his actual form yes was heartbreaking i almost yep. cried in that so, moment from her reaction because that's real yeah so that you know? i know we're going to get to it when we yeah. get to it but like but but to this point i was talking to a friend of mine yesterday he texted mm. me he's not a comic book guy mm. and i think this is what's this is why they're what they're doing is so great we've definitely seen the stories where someone be they male or female has some kind of personal tragedy and just goes crazy and becomes a bad guy like that's just mm -hmm. the it's the sure. it's the jumping off point to just get where the writer wants to get yes. to like right. oh this person died now i'm evil and i kill the world right, right. what they're doing here is different because so the different. reason that scarlet witch is so beloved as a character why so many people love wanda maximoff and what's happening here even if you're not a comic book fan my friend texted me and said i had no idea 
this series was going to be so sad. Mm. Yeah. And and although I do think they're going down the road where Wanda is going to kind of be at least the villain of this. Sure. Maybe she comes out on the other side better and is not the villain for Doctor Strange 2. Maybe totally. she is the villain for Doctor Strange 2. But you understand. And that's the big key difference is yes. that if she was just like, oh, well, Vision died, so now I'm going to kill the world. Okay, well, you're a villain. What she's doing is clearly out of grief. It's clearly yep. out of sadness. Yes. And when you see Vision, like we, because we've gone on this journey with her and we've watched these three episodes of them being cute together and everything yep. else, yep. we are, as much as she's freaking us out and she's mega powerful and we're like, this is kind of fucked up, we right. also are on her side. We yes, feel we're very for her. Yes, and I think right. that's the key difference here. Yep, yeah, who, who wouldn't do that if they had the power to right. do it? Right. right. I think maybe that's oh. what it I think maybe that's what it is for me. Is it's yeah. like I feel like if I were in her position and I was as powerful as she was, yeah. I absolutely see the ability, the capacity within myself to do something like that. Right, because right. It, you know. Again, she's somebody who's literally able to yeah. craft the fantasy world in oh. which she wants to withdraw to escape dealing with her trauma. Yeah. And and Mike, you brought up such a good point. I hadn't even thought of the Monica Rambo of it all and how you have this really great parallel between yeah. these yeah. two women of Monica not having that ability and having to face reality. And she's she's facing it head on, my God. Yeah. And here's the scary part of it all. If Monica goes back in again, Will Wanda manifest her mom? Will we get a right? Will we I can get give you friend? I can give you whatever you want. If you stay here, you can have this. You can have whatever you want. Right, because it's so oh. immediate. Would that be a tactic that she uses to unsettle Monica depending on the situation down the road? So people are wondering about an Evan Peters appearance or or, or uh, uh you know Aaron Taylor Johnson appearance. But Lashana Lynch appearance oh. would be super interesting. Oh my God, now I really want that. <laughs> under the cover, you know? So there's possibilities here for sure. Uh, as we said, uh, we, let's move on because we, we've got a little bit more to get to here. As we said, it, through this whole montage of Jimmy Woo getting every, all this stuff together, we have these names. Todd and Sharon Davis are Mr. and Mrs. Hart. Avalish Tandon is Norm. Harold Proctor is Jones. John, uh, John Collins is Herb. I Isabel Matsuyada is Beverly. But you're right, we didn't get the other names. But it's fascinating. And we thought Herb might be part of this but it seems clear that herb isn't a part of this at this point at least we think yeah. so anyway we get the agent franklin coming through and the, we get the beekeeper moment from episode one that shows up and we're seeing scenes from the last episodes now on the multiple screens that are happening around darcy darcy and jimmy are sitting there and uh, darcy says to him you know have you thought about it? when they're seeing them have kids oh my god that seems like, so funny cute little <laughs> moment he says no i'm just offering you chips uh, it's, it's a, a weird great... place for product but placement there for later it there, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I, was, I, was, I will tell you it worked. Like it worked. Lays. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It worked because it made me want to go eat some Lay's potato <laughs> chips. But I also just love that this is kind of a piece of Jimmy Woo's personality that they've kept continuity wise from Ant Man and Wasp. That he just is always like, like when Paul Rudd was like, "So we're gonna hang out," and he's like, "Did you? Did you really want to want to hang out sometime?" Like this whole him misunderstanding <laughs> things constantly and having these very heartfelt revelations. Yeah. And you're like, "No, dude." Wants to be a, somebody's friend. He actually yeah. wants to be someone's it just, friend. It makes guy. him. It makes him very endearing. <laughs> He's so clumsily awkward about it all. This is also yeah. this is also the moment where Darcy says, which I think is also very meta. She's like, yeah. "Why are they changing decade to decade yes. aside from my own personal enjoyment?" Yes. Which is very meta to the as a TV fan, yeah. we have all been enjoying the hell out of this. Why is it happening? I don't yeah. know, but like again, the fact that they they, they they dive into it head on. They're not trying mm -hmm. to hide from it. They're not saying, hey, we, we had this cool idea, but maybe maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Like they very clearly yeah. are getting in front of all the things that people have said. And because this was shot a long time ago, it's not like they're doing it in reaction to Twitter. No. This is like a very well planned out story. My uh so KB Tibbs in my Discord, who's one of my um Twitch moderators, he had like a theory about the the shifting of the time periods. Okay. Um that I think is there's some merit to, which is basically he said that he feels like in the like basically when Wanda created this sort of fake reality, like she swerved too hard into the like idyllic 50s sitcom. Mm -hmm. And basically like every time there's like her every time sort of maintaining the illusion gets more complicated, she gets closer and closer to reality by moving like further up through the decades. I mean, that's good. <laughs> that's actually great hey, yeah, yeah. because like because like we said we don't see the change between episodes one and two but you right. do have this moment where yeah. uh where where the hearts choke 
Yeah. Uh, which now that we know they're real people for sure is just all the oh, more tragic dying. and upsetting. Oh, uh, oh, and, then, and, then, and then episode two, you sort of get to the end and you have this pregnancy moment and we kind of go into color because things have got more comp. So it's, it, that, I think there's a there's a definitely a validity to that theory for sure. Yeah, yeah. I like that theory. Shannon, and we get to this uh, really essential moment here now of the series after the, you know, what a twist moment from Jimmy Woo. <laughs> they see, and we, 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 we forgot to mention, they noticed Geraldine earlier yes. in this episode. Emma, Dr uh, I'm sorry, Darcy Drop. Keep saying connected. Darcy okay. drops. Darcy I drops accept. her ramen. Yeah, you sh Darcy drops her ramen and freaks out, and we see her. So Geraldine now is approaching. We see her face, and then we see this moment from the last episode where uh, where she says Ultron, and Wanda approaches her, and then it skips to yep. the end, and we get that someone is censoring the broadcast line here. A warning goes out. Jimmy and Darcy leave Shannon, and then we go back into the actual scene of the show, and then we see one of the most, I say, one of the most chilling scenes we've ever seen it in the MCU, incredible. films included, of her walking towards her, because Elizabeth Olden is such a damn good actress, walking to her and saying to her, who are you? You're a stranger here, an outsider. You are trespassing here. And then G her, we see, I think the, for the first time ever, we see the red of her using her yep. powers. Yeah. Remember from Endgame, and she jettisons uh, Geraldine, hash I mean, uh, a.k.a. Monica Rambeau, through the walls, yep. through a field, and then out the energy field itself. Shannon, what were your feelings as you were watching this happening? Well, first, Jimmy is the one to notice that she said Ultron. Yes. yes. And he's, he's like, is that the first time that they've referenced something in our world in right. this world? Right. And again, you get that you get that moment because, uh, yeah, I mean, Elizabeth Olsen has definitely proven that she is uh, like a powerhouse, a powerhouse Jesus performer. Christ. I mean, yeah. you, you, so you, you got it in Endgame. You got it in Age of Ultron. Yeah. And to see her drop this veneer of this, you know, oh. 1970s loving housewife and mother where she's just like, you know, you don't belong here and I want you to go. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, and, yes, it was such a powerful moment. Yeah, it's scary. All I, right. yeah, I, 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 a hundred percent echo all of this. Yeah, it's the first time we see her do her powers the way that we're used to in the movies. Yeah. And what I was really struck by, and this is just, they're nailing it, is when in Endgame, in Infinity War, she shows up and, and like, uh, and, um, uh, Denai Guerrero, she's like, she's like, she's like, why hasn't she been here the whole time? Like, she's a badass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, she's, she comes in, you're like, oh my God, you're a fucking badass. I love you. And then in Endgame, she shows up and she like nearly she takes Thanos out all on her own. And you're like, she oh, killed I she love Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch is so awesome. She's the best. When it gets turned around this way on a character <laughs> that you're rooting for, yeah, she all of a sudden goes from being, I'm Team Scarlet Witch, she's a yeah. badass, to being okay. like, this is so scary yeah. and she's very yes. threatening right now. And when she says the exact word, she goes, you are a stranger and an outsider. And right now you are trespassing here and I want you to leave. Okay. Doing this, it's like, the holy other, shit. The other thing that she very pointedly says is you're not my friend. You're not my yeah. friend. Yes. And so now let's go back to how does Monica Rambeau get into Westview at all? Because Jimmy brings up, it doesn't want me there. Right. But she's able to get in like she so, puts her hand in and she gets sucked right in yeah. so i wonder if and i might be grasping at straws here but i wonder if wanda could kind of sense that monica was somebody who was also immediately dealing with the trauma of loss Ooh, and she was offering her an escape and looking for a connection and a friendship I, with this character that she had crafted of Geraldine, hmm. who now has I, betrayed her by basically being like, yo, wait, we gotta, we gotta confront what's real. It's coming back to me. I was, I read something that was similar, but opposite. Oh, okay. Uh, that, that, that not, that not that it was Wanda doing this. Cause I think uh. Wanda pretty, I think Wanda pretty clearly is like, I just want to deal with my own shit. I don't have time sure, for sure. it. But like she's, right. but I think that somebody was pointing out the whole way that J that Jimmy Woo was like, can't you feel it? And then Monica Rambo walks right up and gets up. Yeah. yeah. Is it, is it not that Wanda sensed this? Is it that Monica is dealing with such loss right now? And this thing is just a giant loss bubble yeah. that she was kind of drawn to it in some yeah. kind of way. I like that theory too. Or, you know, she has powers. Uh, as I'm just saying, uh, we see her her reaction though after she does all of this. It's very interesting. I, you know, I read the Vulture one because I know, Michael, you said they're not so positive about it overall. And I've been reading that, but like, he, uh, the I saw their interpretation was so different than what I got because when she realizes what she done, what she's done, 
it seems to me like she's almost like oh like she's like she lost control for a second. She, well, she did. She, she could. She do. lost. She she put right? herself back in her own in in yeah. reality. Reality. Yeah. Yes. 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 And in that moment, <laughs> so then she just like put it all together. Yeah. They described it as uh, someone who was uh, just kind of uh, bothered by it, and I'm like, no, oh my god, I didn't more get that, that at all. No, yeah. no. And it's then, like yeah. she's holding on to this by a thread. Yes. And, and she the, has to fix everything real and, quick. And the moment too after where. Monica's been jettisoned out. Mm -hmm. She uses her powers to put everything back together. And then like she actual Wanda Maximoff, not TV sitcom wife Wanda yeah. Maximoff is like alone with her babies for the yeah. first time. Like I cried. Mm, that's and great. I, I also and don't think it's a coincidence that she had to use her powers to put the world back together. And when Vision comes back in, he's affected. Yes. yes. Because yeah. I, right, Mike. Well, because she, because she broke. I mean, yep. when she mm -hmm. says, so when she says to Monica, you you don't live here you're not from here how would you know who ultron is like like she's and but but like that is in itself an admission yeah. that she knows who ultron is yeah. like the veneer breaks down and there's been a lot of questions this whole time is somebody doing this to wanda is wanda right. not aware i think it's pretty clear like wanda's living in her own fantasy yeah. for sure but right. she knows what she's doing she yes. knows yep. what's going on and i think shannon's right like you have this moment where reality breaks she kicks her the fuck out i think that look is a realization it's that thing where it's like fuck I, dude, this is this is get this is getting harder. This is yeah. this is not yeah. as easy. Put everything back together. Or, but or I think Shannon's scared. right. Or you're scared of your own power. Yes. Remember, she still knew at this. People forget I, she still knew at this what it must be like to build an entire reality and manipulate people's minds. How far out can her power go? I she's don't think. I don't know. I I don't think that she's feeling very scared of her own power right now. I think her over okay. uh, only because I think the overriding emotion that she has is I want to be with Vision, and I don't think she's questioning this. I don't think she's like, oh, I mean, he's dead, and I brought him back. Should I have done this? I think it's pretty clear that she's like, fuck everything. I'm gonna live here for the rest of my life with the man that I love, and I do not care about anything else. I so think that is her overriding emotion. Yeah. If she's really like, fuck everything and determined, why is she yeah. having these breaks? I, I, I think she, she, 100%. she had a break. She had a break because she's Monica been doing Rambeau, every episode. She's had these breaks every episode though. She's, I, I, I agree with you that the level of power that it's taking to control this whole town mm -hmm. is a lot for her. Yeah. But I don't think that when she breaks, it's because she's having doubts. I'm, I think she's having doubts. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh. I think, I think, I think she's, it, things are breaking because controlling 4,000 people and reshaping reality yeah. over an entire town is a lot of, it is a lot yeah. of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of zazz <laughs> as they might say. I think it's, it's sort of a double-edged thing of like yeah. being afraid. It, it, it's like she, she is afraid that she is losing her grip mm -hmm. on this reality. Yeah. And thus she takes it a step too far in jettisoning Mont. Like, Right. I think she very, very intentionally was like, Monica, you got to go. You don't belong here. Goodbye. But that there is a moment of like, you know what? Did I, did I go too far? Yeah. Did I go too far? I felt that too I, as well. I, 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 okay. I think that's valid. I disagree. Like I'm not, I, I don't think, I don't think you're wrong. Cause I think this is completely up to interpretation. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not arguing the point, right. but opposite, opposite perception is again, I think that her motivation is very clear here. Her motivation is vision and her kids, and that's it. Well, and, and so I think I think yeah. when she I, I think when she jettisons Mon Monica Rambeau, she's completely okay with that. I think the look that we're seeing is fuck. I broke the set. I hope nobody sees this. Oh, I let me really? reshape this. Oh, really, she's, you agree she's just trying. Okay. She's just trying to put everything back together as quickly as possible. And I agree with Shannon that what we see when Vision comes back in is she's she's had a moment where she's lost control a bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and she sees Vision for what's really yeah. there. Like I mean, that's what's really there. And she then instantly puts it all back together. But this right. is not her having any kind of moment of was I was I too harsh with Monica? Am I going too far? It's okay. fuck this perfect reality is broken. Let me put it back together really quick. I want to be in my perfect reality. All right, we'll see. Interesting. If that, yeah, man. Certainly different opinions on this. Yep. For sure. <laughs> but we, do, but we do, there's no difference of opinion with Monica. What she says, it's Wanda. It is Wanda. She's very clear that yeah. it's Wanda who is controlling this and doing all of this. But Michael, as you say, when we get back and Shannon and Emma too, like we get back, we see that moment with Vision. Uh, that stopped me cold. Like that was 
heartbreaking to see. It was so well done and just the the eyes going. And yeah. of course, there's West Coast Avengers references there for people who are learned in the comics of what he looks like when he comes back. And, and there's Wonder Man stuff possibly down the road if you're going to go West Coast Avengers route, all of that uh, and Grim Reaper stuff. But like seeing just the Mind Stone ripped out of the top of his head and him saying like, what's wrong? So like oh. weirdly and innocent. It was chilling. And then she snaps him back to who he really, what she wants him to look like. Again, Vision says, what's wrong? We can go wherever he wants. Senses that she's upset said or hurt we can go wherever we want and she says no this is our home don't worry darling i have everything under control so well, she also said when he says we can go someplace else she says yeah. no we no, can't we no we can't so right. something about this hexagonal part of land yeah. that either it's the cnbr all of that residual cnbr or it's a deal she has made with someone that says you can have what you want but you have to stay here Right. And one yeah. of the things that I read is that everyone else, except for maybe Dottie and Agnes, uh, uh, are real people that are being manipulated her. So has she do, do they at some level understand that she has reanimated vision and is making people treat him like he's a real person, a real being, whatever, even though he's in essence a walking corpse? Have there been moments where he has had interactions with these people in the town where Episode he has two. turned? Where he's turned gray, where he's turned gray, I mean, and she's lost control for just a second, and they see it, and they're and they she just makes the skips or whatever and changes the perception. So I don't know. I mean, Dottie said, I don't trust you. You know, there's there's <laughs> stuff here. So um anyway, that's how we end the show. And we see her say, you know, uh, uh, uh Monica Rambeau say it's Wanda, it's really it's all Wanda, and then uh we, voodoo child, Jimi Hendrix's voodoo child kicks in, they sit down. <laughs> Uh, at the couch with their respective babies. Vision looks a little unsettled, and then she says, what are we going to watch? And they hit the TV yep. and that's the end of the episode. Um, I want to say something about Voodoo Child, and let's get into the ending here. The lyrics, first of all, Voodoo Child is a great, that, uh, for those who are wrestling fans, Hulk Hogan came out to that. <laughs> and listen, Hulk Hogan came out to that song when he turned from a good guy to a bad guy. So I don't know Whoa. if there's a connection there. But that's <laughs> that's a good that call. was his song when he was Hollywood Hulk Hogan. He was a mean guy. So, I mean, I've seen professional wrestling crossover in, in artists. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. But I mean, he, John the, Paul, Paul Bettany did say there's one more cast member that has not been revealed. <laughs> and you're going to lose your mind if Hulk Hogan kicks in there's the door. There's no way it's Hulk Hogan. Man, I don't send it down. But the lyrics here, and I want to point them out. Well, I stand up next to a mountain, I chop it down with the edge of, a, of my hand. I pick up all the pieces, make an island, might even raise a little sand. I didn't mean to take up all your sweet time. I'll give it right back to you one of these days. Kind of like taking the reality of these people and then mm -hmm. putting them back in place again. If I don't meet you no more in this world, then I'll meet you on, in the next one and don't be late. And I don't take no for an answer. So these are some of the lyrics. And these are some of the lyrics in the song. So it's a great Jimi Hendrix song. For those of you who haven't listened to it, it's fucking excellent. But anyway, what did you guys think about these final moments here? Uh, Emma, let's go with you first. These final moments here is they're sitting down and she's recomposed the reality. Yeah. And Monica understands that it is actually Wanda in control of everything. I mean, it becomes a horror show. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, in a, in, and I mean it in a great, like in a great way. And like yeah. there was that super bone chilling moment. And regardless of which side you stand on of Wanda being like, did I go too far versus like oh no i broke the set like either way yeah. she has very actively made the decision in that moment that she's gonna she's gonna do whatever it takes to maintain this like she yeah. th that i i love this story for anybody that goes down a villain route which is that like it, it's them being like uh, it, regardless of whether she ends up going down a villain route which i right. still kind of think she will at least temporarily um and again that so it certainly would be in line with things that we've seen in the comics. And and ultimately, I think that is what is so appealing about this character is that she is complicated. And like when she does bad stuff, you get why she does it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and but I, I think that um, that idea of, OK, well, regardless of whether or not I was OK with this choice, this is a choice that I made. And so at this point, I'm fucking committed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Mike, <laughs> overall, overall thoughts on this as we end the show and the episode, rather? 
I mean, overall thoughts, this opened things up huge. I'm going to be really curious to see what happens. As Shannon pointed out, like we know that we've got sort of the family ties 80s version of yes. Wanda and Vision. Yeah. We know that we have sort of the 90s Roseanne version of Wanda and Vision. And it seems like we might have sort of a 2000s modern family kind of Wanda mm -hmm. and Vision coming in, in the cards as well. So we know we're still going to be living in these TV eras. It's not like yeah. we've completely abandoned this. So, But now that we've been outside, now that we have a better idea of what's going on, how are they going to start playing with this moving forward? It's very clear that this was the time in the show that they needed to give us this bigger view. Yeah. So are, are we going to be cutting back and forth? Are we going to see the sword agents kind of infiltrate even further? Are we going to see the townspeople, Agnes, Dottie, break more often, kind of reveal things to Vision? Uh, like, so I think that there's a lot of options for where we go. And I just think that, I mean, I just have to say, like, I... I Marvel is just this is superior storytelling. Yeah. Like so it is good. they are really they're really killing it and they are really handling kind of to the point that Emma was making about people's concerns about Wanda. And if they have those concerns if they if they don't like the idea of a woman being emotional and these powers I completely respect that as really? Emma said like everyone's entitled to their opinions on this. As a fan of Scarlet Witch, I think the way that they have built to this moment mm -hmm. and the way that they are currently handling it is to me as a fan really really exciting to see the care that they're taking with all this and i just love that my, my barometer for all of these things always is not what us hardcore comic book geeks think uh but like what my friends who don't like comics think and the yeah. fact as i said earlier that i have so many friends that are like very wrapped up in the vision wanda <laughs> romance right now it to me is a testament of how well this is working yeah romance it's it's dead. He's dead. Uh, Shannon, thoughts on this final episode? Oh, on, on this episode, in this uh, f final moment here. I mean, everything uh, to <laughs> echo what Mike and, and Emma both said. Like everything has been just fantastic, and, and I do think this episode came at the right time. The mm. fact that they yeah. released episode one and two on the same night, you had one more week where they are starting to show you, they're starting to reveal some of that mystery, and here you get a lot of answers to a lot of questions. Yeah. I mean, you know, phase four is not rolling out the way that they had initially intended it. We were going to get Black Widow and Falcon and Winter Soldier before this, and I understand what Emma said at the beginning about there is the possibility of superhero fatigue. Um, starting phase four with this, which was serendipity. I mean, you know, this, this yeah. wasn't the plan that they chose. Certainly possible. I think this, was, this was the plan that, that was meant to happen because mm -hmm. they're showing that, yes, you, you're going to get some more of what you want, but you're also going to get some crazy programming like yeah. WandaVision and Loki. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm super jazzed. There is a one minute preview out for the rest of the season yeah. where you do see some some possible answers to the questions that we have posed. I won't, even though we said this was a spoiler review, I won't talk about the preview. <laughs> other than that, you know, we do we do get a little modern family hint, and, and we get some hints of what is about to come. Yeah, I mean, I I I I thought some some of the comedic moments didn't hundred percent work for me. Felt a little bit like a Scooby Doo episode. But aside from that, <laughs> I think overall this was, as you guys have said, this was the perfect time to drop this episode. Just when we've hit that kind of breaking point for some people about like what is really going on here, here you go to explain it, uh, kind of uh, recapping all the other episodes and then filling in the blanks that you might have had. Now we're all on board. We all understand what's happening here to a degree. And now we got to figure out where we're going to go. I think it was telling what Darcy said uh, to Jimmy in that moment when, she's, when he's asking her all these questions. He's like, dude, I have the same kind of intel you do. We all now have the same kind of intel everyone else does about this situation aside from the people who created this show. So we're all going to be speculating as we go forward. But we're setting, we're seeing things being set up here. R Rambo coming out now, uh, Monica Rambo coming out now. What's going to be the interaction with Hayward now? Oh, you better send me back in. No, because I don't think he anticipated this was going to be otherworldly or fantastical, giving her first terrestrial mission. This right. is so much more. So what is that battle going to be like? How, uh, how are Jimmy and Darcy going to expand their power as they try to figure out what is happening here? Are they going to be directing the soldiers? Are they going to be making the decisions on how this these operations go about? That's going to be interesting to see. And also within the world, as you said, Michael, we've got more sitcom decades to go through. So how many more cracks in this world are going to show up? Who else is going to appear to take her out of this world that she's created, this perfect world that she's created? 
All of that I'm so curious to see, and it's all been laid here in episode four to jettison us into these la next few episodes. And I, and I have a feeling that all these people are complaining about the first three episodes when the season is over are going to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe it's over. I loved it. I guarantee you <laughs> that's going to happen with a lot of those people. So, oh, all right. <laughs> that's our spoiler review episode uh, here for WandaVision episode four. Thank you all so much for joining us, and especially thank you to the great Emma Five who has been joining us for these uh, reviews. Thank you. Emma, you're the best. Where can people find you, please? Yeah, you can find me all over the internet at my name, Emma Fife, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. I'm uh, on Thursdays uh, at 6 p.m. Pacific time on my Twitch channel doing uh, Thirst Day streams where I make a cocktail and play Otome games, which are Japanese dating sims. Uh, nice. I don't realize right now, which I definitely started playing as a bit and I'm now fully invested in so like <laughs> please come hang out it's really fun That's awesome. we're trying to date the cute t2d anime boy versions of victorian <laughs> literary figures that's literally what this game is it's ridiculous <laughs> um, and then of course you can also find me on the download uh over yeah. on ven ven.tv uh our show airs at 6 p.m every night uh well not every night but you know monday through friday and then also the ven youtube channel we're starting to make some stuff for that as well Great. Awesome. Uh, Shannon, what do we have to tell? Yeah, if you'd like to follow us on social media on Twitter, it's at geek underscore buddies on Instagram at the underscore geek underscore buddies. If you'd like to follow me on social media on Twitter, it's at Shannon underscore McClung on Instagram at Shannon the Geek Buddy. If you would like to follow Mr. Vogel, it's at MK2. And if you would like to follow Mr. Roca, it is at the Roca Says. Mikey? Uh, no matter what the decade, no matter what is going on, we are going to be here to give you all the geek news. Uh, but we need your help to do it. So some things that you can do if you enjoyed this review, if you enjoyed hanging out with the Geek Buddies uh, and talking all the coolest stuff about WandaVision is hit the like button, subscribe to Johnny's Outlaw page, tons of awesome content, some of it with us, some of it without. Uh, and if you are listening to this on uh, Anchor or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, definitely uh, rate us there, give us some stars, leave a comment. It helps us go up in the rankings as people search for geeky kind of things. Leave some comments below. Let us know what you thought. Do you agree with us? Do you not agree with us? Are you not liking where WandaVision is going? Are you loving it? What do you think is going to happen? Let us know. We love reading the comments. We love getting your thoughts. And the absolute best thing you can do is retweet this video, share this video, post it on Facebook, send it to your friends. When someone's asking you what the fuck is going on in WandaVision, <laughs> you don't want to explain it. Just send them this link. They will get all the information they need. Yeah, absolutely. Great points, Mike. If you missed any of our previous uh, review episodes, we have them up. Episode one and two and episode three almost thirteen thousand views on episode one and two review and and over ten thousand views on the episode two review look it's it's a little channel that could so the fact that we're getting those views on these uh, reviews means a lot to us and uh, means a lot to me personally as well on this channel so thank you all so much for joining us please do everything everybody said follow everybody here and uh come back and join us next week for another brand new episode of a spoiler review wandavision episode five here on the geek buddies <gasps> <gasps>